2019, the Rangers drafted third baseman Josh Young out of Texas Tech University with the eighth overall pick of the draft to much joy of Rangers fans and started building up a lot of hype after his great seasons at Tech. Now, though, is the time for the Rangers to decide if they want to start giving him a chance or if they want to stick with Isaiah Conner-Falefa for the time being. And going into the spring training is really when we'll see who's going to do what. He'll have the chance to show the team that he's ready, or they'll still go with Isaiah Conner-Falefa. So it's tough to say right now, but it really is just depending on how they do in spring training. And I'm going to take a look at his numbers as well as kind of talk about how he compares to Connor Falefa to see what's going to happen. And as I'll talk about as well, a big part of this discussion even happening now is because of the Simeon and Seager signings. Before that, it was very obvious that Young was going to be the third baseman. But now it gets a little more complex. They got guys like Solak, they got Connor Falefa, a little stuff going on in the infield that they have to deal with, so... Stay tuned to this video, and I hope this breakdown is informative to y'all. Taking a look at his numbers here in his career, it's two seasons so far to look at. The first one being between the rookie team and the high A team, because um, for those who don't know, there's also a low A, which is a shorter season. It, it's weird stuff in the minor leagues, but 588 in the first four games, 287 in the next 40. Pretty solid stuff, a total of... Two home runs, but it's not a big sample size, of course. And when you're at that low level, you're not super focused on power because we all know he's a power hitter, more or less, right? So that that's all good stuff. And then this year was when he really broke out. He had a little bit of a injury. I think it was foot injury, but overall looking pretty good. 43 games with Frisco, which I actually saw him in Frisco at one point, I think. And he hit 308 with Frisco, and in the next 35 games, he managed to hit 348 at the next level up. Over 1,000 OPS, 9 home runs. I mean, it's pretty killer stuff right there. A little bit high on the strikeouts, but that's pretty much the thing these days. You know, he still walks a pretty good amount. And overall, obviously, he's hitting 348, so don't really need to worry about strikeouts at that point. But it's interesting to see the progression of him kind of getting better each year. So 326 overall on the season in 2021 between both levels. And a 316 in his very first season between rookie league and the high A team. If we take a look at his fielding as well, because he will probably be third base. Um, looks like he's played a few different positions here mostly just third base and dh uh oh yeah here's a minor screw i was looking for the total thing so 986 fielding percentage that's very good in 817 innings 92 games started and then 94 total so that's really great stuff and that's another reason why he is definitely getting ready to be the guy for the rangers here very soon and i wanted to discuss him compared to Isaiah Conner-Falefa as well. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, he is poised to replace him. And initially, it wasn't going to be that way. But Texas came out of nowhere and signed Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager, which totally lit the baseball world on fire. If you haven't seen my video about Dodgers fans' reactions from the other day, I'll have that link below and on the little iCard thing that should pop up sometime around when I'm saying this. Insane stuff. So it, it wasn't going to be that way. It was probably going to be Young at third and kind of for Leffa at short, Solak at second, Nate Lowe at first, or Guzman, you know, whatever happens there. But I think now we're looking at Nate Lowe at first, or sorry, Nathaniel Lowe. I, I keep forgetting that. Nathaniel Lowe at first, and then Simeon at second, Seeger at short, and Young at third is what it's probably going to be. And then I would expect Trevino, Heim, and Huff at catcher with one of those three being DFA'd or sent down at some point. Huff will have to play for a spot because of his injuries as well, but it should be pretty obvious. And that's the thing with Young. He is going to have to play for a spot. It's not just guaranteed, but 
the, there's a couple ways they could approach it. He might start the season, or they might have counter for left of play like the first 20 games or something, and then when Young's feeling good, they'll bring him up. That's probably what they'll do. They're not known for <laughs> starting these guys when they're supposed to. It's either too early or too late from what I've noticed, and examples of too early is probably like Profar, Mazzara, Odor, and I, don't, I wouldn't say Young is too late, but they, they shouldn't hold him back at this point. If he plays well in spring, let the kid play, as they say. So that's the likely scenario. And I'll probably make like a roster prediction at some point, or at least a lineup prediction. And that's going to be very tough for the outfield. It still depends on what they do post-lockout. So that's really it for this video, though, guys. Pretty short. I just wanted to take a look at Young and how it's going to affect the 2022 season based on what he does and if he starts or not and I think they should let him start if he has a good spring so let me know in the comments what y'all think this was actually requested as well in one of my previous videos recently to just talk about young and how it's going to look for 2022 so hopefully I delivered and I will talk to y'all later